our service. We welcome everyone here. It is good to be with you once again. We also want to welcome any and all visitors who may be here in our midst and pray that your hearing of God's word will be a blessing for you as well. Um, we're just so happy we do celebrate Holy Communion. Uh, I was going to say the announcement's in the bulletin, but I don't think it's in the bulletin, so I won't say it. Hopefully it's been up on the, on the screen. So, uh, But we do invite those to come forward for communion who are, are in agreement with us in our theology, and we're happy to have you here today. Um, let's open with hymn number 418, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. I invite you to rise for the opening portion of our service. O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. You do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. He is going to restore him to As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. And when one comes to see me, he utters empty words. When his heart gathers, while his heart gathers iniquity, when he goes out, he tells it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They say a deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. You 
But you, O Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up, that I may repay them. But you have upheld me because of my integrity and set me in your presence forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me, heal me, for I have sinned against you. You may be seated. First reading for this night is from the Acts of the Apostles, the seventh chapter, beginning with the 48th verse. Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made by hands. As the prophet says, heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and in ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the Righteous One, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. The second lesson for this day is from the second letter of Paul to Timothy, the third chapter beginning with the first verse. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. O Lord, have mercy on us. Rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel for this evening is recorded in the 14th chapter of St. Mark. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of the unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. 
And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. So they went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise. Let us be going. See, my Savior is at hand. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve. And with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Praise be to God. Continue with the singing of our sermon hymn.
grace you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we are gathered here as your people to remember the depth of love you have shared us with us in your Son, Jesus. Lord, as we move through this Lenten season, help us to focus our eyes on Jesus, to remember not just the sins we have committed in our times of rebellion, but also the depth of love and grace you have shared with us from the cross. To that end, to bless our hearing of your word this evening and our reception of the sacrament, that your name would be glorified in our lives, not just in this place, but in our homes and schools and workplaces, that all that we do may share with others the joy that we have in knowing you. In Jesus' name, amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Judas is a name that will be forever remembered and associated with betrayal, with treachery, with handing over the innocent Jesus to sinful men who would see to his death. Tonight, by looking at and through the eyes of Judas, we want to also recognize how important it is for us to take a hard look at ourselves and then fix our eyes on Jesus. St. Mark writes, Then Judas Iscariot, one who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. Mark's mention of, G of Judas as one of the twelve really highlights the, the very deep and personal relationship and therefore also the very deeply personal nature of Judas' treasure, treachery, of the brazenness, if you will, of his betrayal. Judas had been chosen out of countless others to be one of the men to follow Jesus, to be his apostle, to be his disciple. It was a select group who had the privilege of being in the inner circle of God's own Son for three years. Jesus, Judas, excuse me, knew firsthand about the love and mercy of Jesus. He had witnessed the powerful miracles. He had heard the Beatitudes again and again. He had heard the parable of the rich fool and the warnings about greed that were drummed into his ears. He had gone out and preached in Jesus' name. He had heard the warnings of those who had preached in the Lord's name but are shocked then on Judgment Day to find themselves in hell. If you want to see exhibit number one of someone who had all the right things and all the right experiences taught to him and shared with him, but then rebelled, it is Judas whom we have before us this evening. Judas had sought out the chief priests with an offer to hand Jesus over to them. And we are told that when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. The Jewish leaders were seeking an inconspicuous location to arrest Jesus. And Judas would provide that for them, an ideal opportunity in the middle of the night, in an isolated garden. And we know from the other Gospels that Judas was indeed a greedy man, a thief, if you will. So he must have looked at this opportunity for betrayal as an opportunity to line his own pockets. Judas' plan was in place. But first he had to go through the day of preparation for the Passover and then 
Passover meal itself. And at dinner that evening, Jesus drops this bombshell on the 12 apostles. He says, as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. Now try to picture this for a minute. 26 eyes around the table have heard this statement. Jesus' eyes are calmly looking around at his followers. By his divine omniscience, he knew exactly who it was who was going to betray him. Mark tells us of the disciples that they all began to be sorrowful and to say to one another, Is it I? Is it I? You can picture them looking around the room at their fellow companions with whom they have spent three years. And as tears begin to stream down their faces to express their grief at what Jesus was predicting. But what were Judas's eyes doing? Did he look down in shame? Did he nervously glance around? to see if anyone really suspected him. Maybe he put on a good show and acted like everybody else. We don't know for sure. I suspect the last one would be true. But what is really striking about the account that we find in the Gospel of Mark is this, that Jesus does not name Judas. We don't hear of the traitor until the Garden of Gethsemane. Why do you suppose that is? Perhaps Jesus wanted each one of the twelve to examine himself to see if he was capable of betraying innocent blood. To see if he was able to commit treason against his Lord. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wants each of us to examine our loyalty to him as well. Box St. Matthew's Passion takes that fateful scene of the Last Supper and sets it to sublime music. When it gets to the section in which Jesus announces that the betrayer is at table, part of the chorus sings the words of each disciple, asking if he is the traitor. The text in German is Herr bin X. Translation, Lord, is it I? And then comes a confession to Jesus in the form of a great chorale sung by the whole chorus. It begins, Ich bin's. It is I. The English translation reads like this. It is I. I should atone bound hand and foot in hell the scourges and bonds and what you endured, my soul, has earned. Bach gets it right. It is I. All of us have participated in the sin of Judas. All of us have committed treason, turning against our Lord. That's what our sin is. It is betrayal of our King of Grace. And if we were to die in our sins, certainly, as Jesus says, it would be better for us if we had not been born. That's why 
There is such great good news in our account this evening. Jesus in the upper room says to the disciples, the Son of Man goes as it, is, as it is written of him. And then in the garden, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Jesus came specifically for this purpose, to be betrayed, to pour out his holy precious blood, to suffer an innocent death to atone for your sins and my sins and for Judas' sins and for the rest of the sins in all the world. The Son of Man, Mark writes in chapter 10, came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. There are deep mysteries here. Judas was morally culpable for his own betrayal of Jesus and justly paid the price for sin and for his impenitence, even though the scriptures had foretold that this was going to happen. God did not force Judas to do anything. It was Judas' sinful will, along with the devil's prompting, that led him to this. Yet, behind the scenes, this is what God had planned. This is what God had wanted all along. The Father wanted to punish his son. The father wanted to hand over his son to this death. And the son, Jesus himself, went willingly out of the depth of his love for you and for me. The verb that we translate with the word betray in this text can also have the very simple meaning to hand over, to deliver. In Romans chapter 4, the Apostle Paul says that we will be counted for righteousness to us who believe in him who raised from the dead, Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trans trespasses and raised for our justification. Who did the handing over? Of course, physically in the garden it was Judas. But above all, and this is the important point this evening, above all, God the Father loved the world this way. He gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, my brothers and sisters in Christ, fix your eyes on the one who for you became a curse on the tree of the cross, and in him find salvation. You traitors, you Judases, and I am with that group. In the waters of holy baptism, you have been washed clean in the blood of the Lamb of God, the same one you have betrayed. Don't try to hide your sins. Confess them. He is not surprised in any way that you are sinners. He knew that when he came to go to the cross. And he went to that cross to establish his kingdom of grace. He knows that even now he forgives sins to all who repent. For every time that you have betrayed him, for every time you have made promises to him that you have not kept, for all the commitments to your Lord, that you have failed to keep. 
remember this. There is forgiveness for you. There is forgiveness for you when you hear those words of absolution in your ears each Sunday morning. There is forgiveness to you and for you when you remember your baptism and there recognize that your sins have been fully and completely washed away. There is forgiveness for you when you come to this altar this evening to receive the very body and blood of Jesus as he says to you, your sins are forgiven for my grace is sufficient for you. The verb we translate with betray means to be handing over or delivering. And St. Paul uses it twice in 1 Corinthians 11. In verse 23, Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread and blessed it and broke it and took the cup and shares with each of us today his body and blood for forgiveness of sins, for life and salvation. Remember this every Sunday. When you hear those words, those precious words of Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and then you can sing with joy, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, for my own eyes have seen your salvation. May you always celebrate for all of eternity God's gift of salvation as you look to him. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We worship God with our offering.
Thank you, marvelous. As you're able, please rise. We we'll continue with the antiphon and the Magnificat. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. My soul. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For the mighty one has done great things to me, and holy is his name. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has held up the Lord. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, who was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup, and when it supped and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, All of you drink of this cup, for it is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We continue then with our distribution. Yes.
As you are able, please rise. O Lord, hear my prayer. I lift my heart unto you. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent, creating us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. You may be seated as we continue to sing once again, Abide With Me. Please set your clocks ahead an hour on Saturday. We see us Sunday morning and Chairman. And I will make this quick, but as quick as I can. First, I know about the air cards, but if you have four, write in choice dollars that you can designate and you would like to designate it to us. We know the time's coming up. Please designate it to us before the time runs out. Second is for all the people that weren't in here Sunday, we had a vote. student be appointed to us and then 
we would call a school student if we are chosen to have one as our next pastor. Uh, the third thing is the roof. We have been working on this. We have bids. We think the one that we're going to go with will replace the roof above us and the roof above the first section of classrooms. We're about $100,000 short to finish that section. We have enough for this section. So we're going to be doing some fundraisers and stuff, but 